In this video we'll give an overview of the tool database and we can look at how we can use a tool database to organize our tools and we'll begin with giving a brief overview of the interface. And then we'll look closer at how we can add, remove and edit the materials and the tools in your tool database. So for now let's just cancel out of here and we'll go to this button here to go across to our toolpath menu and then we can click this button here to access our tool database. Now this is the tool database dialog box. Now this dialog is divided into three parts. So at the top here we have the controls for the material and the machine here. So you can see that these are separate on the top left and top right respectively. On the left here you can see we have our tool list which we can expand and we can collapse. And you'll see that when you expand them and select the tool it updates the right hand side of the tool database here and gives you information about that tool. And then on the bottom here we have the commands bar and this is where we can add and remove tools. We can add and remove toolpath groups so we can import and export uh, tool databases. So all of our tools that we currently have and may want to add in the future we can associate with different settings according to the material and the machines that we're using to cut our parts out with. So if we take a look at the top bar here we have the material and you can see it's currently set to hardwood and what the software is currently telling me is that the settings we're looking at here are appropriate to the hardwood material. So if you use the drop down list we can see we've got acrylic, hardwood, MDF and softwood. And these are the four materials that will come with your software. If you go to the right hand side you can see we have the drop down for machine. You can see on the drop down list I've got several machines listed here. I've got the desktop and large and these two are default machines that come with the software. And then I have the option to search online for my machine which was the generic a desktop 12 by 24 machine and so when you browse for a machine online and you install it then the software will install that with a set of tools that has reasonable initial settings to get you started according to the machine that you're using just as we do for desktop and large so everything that you see here is just an example of the settings that you can use for this particular tool so let's have a look at adding in the new material so if we go up to the top left over here and click the button next to the material drop down list we can open up our material management dialog now you can see we've got listed here our four materials that come with the tool database already that we already have in the software, so acrylic, hardwood, MDF and softwood. But if we want to add a new one in, we can click this icon here to add a new material into the database and activate it. So you'll see it's now currently called new material, but we want to change that to plywood. So if we change that to plywood and then we hit apply, you'll notice it changes it in the drop down list as well. So now it's listed there as plywood and we've successfully added that material into the software. We can also copy our active material and activate the copy and we can also remove an active material so let's say if we want to remove the hardwood material if I click this button here to remove it you'll notice that I get a warning and the software is saying that removing that material will remove all the cutting data to the tools that are associated with that material do I want to delete that now in this case I don't I want to keep all of my tools that I've got associated with this particular material but if we click no for now and go to plywood and use that button to remove that active material you notice I don't get the warning because I didn't have any tools or data associated with that plywood material. So for now let's click OK at that menu and go over to the uh, right hand side over here where we have the icon that enables us to uh, open our machine management dialog. So let's click on that and let's have a look at this. So you can see here currently I have the desktop machine and you can see we can add in a new machine, we can copy uh, a machine here we can remove them if we want to and you can see that we currently have on the drop down list here all the machines that we have uh, available to us in the software at the moment so any that came with the software and any that we set up ourselves manually as well. You can see here currently I've got the desktop uh, machine listed and you can see we have the name, the manufacturer, the model, controller, uh, the width, the height, uh, the units here as well and the associated post processors and if I change my list so if I change on my drop down list to the desktop 12 by 12 you notice I've got different post processes depending on my machine so I've got four listed here and only two listed on this one for example and you can add these in over here using this button here to select a post processor uh, but this is covered in our machine configuration guide as well now if I go back up to my desktop machine we can go to the top here and you can see I can add in a custom machine to the database and activate it so this is where you would use the search online option and if your machine wasn't there and you wanted to add it, that in and you've got a custom built machine you can do that from here so you can add in uh, the machine into the database where you just input the different fields and you can use the plus icon here uh, to select 
uh, a post processor to be associated with your particular machine. This option at the top here gives you the ability to install an offline machine package and the one to the right here is where you can search online to find your particular machine. So this is covered in the uh, machine configuration tutorial which will be in the related videos but this allows you to search online for your particular machine if it is listed whereby you can install that machine along with the associated uh, post processors as well as tool setups for that particular machine. But with that covered we're going to click OK for now and come out of this menu and then we can assign or set various settings for our tools according to our machine. Now every tool in the tool database consists of two separate entities that are the physical properties of the tool such as its diameter and the number of flutes and we call this the tool geometry and then there is the data that may change if we were using the same tool with different materials and we call this information the cutting data. To distinguish between the two types of data, the tool geometry is stored in the top of the information panel, so over here, and the cutting data is stored towards the bottom of the information panel. Now let's imagine we have a single quarter inch end mill in our workshop and some of the properties of this tool will not change whatever material we use. For example, the tool's type or the fact that it's a quarter inch diameter uh, this is the tool geometry. However, the properties such as feeds and speeds will depend dramatically on the material that we are cutting. For example, if we were cutting in hardwood, so if we go over to our hardwood setting over here, we would then expect the feeds and speeds to be very different versus if we were cutting uh, in foam, for example. But rather than represent this as two different tools in the tool database, we can just have a single tool and adjust the cutting data to match the active material. So let's try this now. So let's go in and add in a new material. So with our material management dialog open, let's click on the plus icon to add a new material. I'm going to call this one sign foam and we're going to click apply, click OK. And now we've got the sign foam uh, material in the top left selected. And let's take a moment to have a look at our uh, tool settings now. Now you see on the left hand side here, all of these tools are greyed out. And the reason they're greyed out is because they currently don't have any tools associated with the sign foam material. And that's why they're all greyed out. So we need to look at adding in the data for those tools and the settings so we can use them uh, with this particular material. So when I click on this tool, you'll notice that the settings over on the right hand side here, like the diameter and the flutes, uh, do not change. It's still an M mil tool and it still recognizes that it has a 0.25 inch diameter and two flutes. But you can see at the bottom here, we've got this option to copy settings from. So we can do that. So to get us started, let's have a look at copying these settings uh, from another tool. So you can see that it's going to copy the settings for this tool from the quarter inch end mill, uh, from the desktop machine. And then we can choose the material that we'd like to copy these settings from. In this case, I'm going to choose hardwood, but you can choose the materials here as well. And we can click copy. And you'll notice now it's copied the uh, data for that tool setting from the hardwood uh, material setting for that particular quarter inch end mill. And now we can look at changing the feeds and speeds to be something more appropriate for when we're cutting sign foam. For example, if we look at changing the spindle speed, we can change this down to 18. We can change the feed rate to 100, the plunge rate to 40. And then what we can do is click apply. Now notice that it's still grayed out at the moment, but when I click apply, it's now available to select. So this is associated this tool with the sign phone material, the desktop machine, and now this is ready to use and select with our tool pass. So with that tool now activated, we currently can see that this is the tool that is available to us, but what if we want to see only the tools that are available to us at present and we don't want to see the tools that aren't available to us? Well, we can right click on this menu here and we choose to hide unset tools. So you can see I've only got the one tool displayed now because that is the only tool I've got associated with this particular uh, material and machine. So if you want to organize your tool database a little bit, this is one way you can do so. And now if I switch to my hardwood material, you'll notice that the feeds and speeds are appropriate for hardwood. But if I switch back to my sign foam, you'll notice they're changed and they've applied for that sign foam uh, end mill where we've got the different feeds and speeds and spindle speed because it's appropriate for sign foam. So you can see how useful it is to have one single tool where you have a set of different parameters according to the machines that you're using. So if we now switch to our large machine 
you'll see that there's no data here because we don't have any tools assigned for sign foam for this particular machine. So let's go back to our desktop and we're gonna unhide the unset tool. So let's just do that. And now we've got our full list here again. And let's switch to hardwood so we can see all the selectable tools in this case. And now let's look at some more tool data. So each tool in our tool database will have different adjustable parameters depending on its type. For example, if I look at a V-bit tool, you'll notice it has an angle, whereas the end mill does not. However, there are lots of fields that are common to all tools. So every tool supports a tool name, which is listed up here. And we have a notes field, and this can be helpful to include reminders about properties of the tool. The tool notes can also be output by the post processor depending on the controller. And that may be useful for some post processing operations. For example, you could put it here, cut in three passes. So you know that every time you use this tool on hardwood that you want to cut in three passes, for example. So if you've done some testing beforehand, you know that typically in the material that you cut in a certain amount of passes, you can put that up in the notes field if that helps you. The tool database always includes the diameter of some form and the number of flutes to and to update any of the fields in here, for example, we can just update that and then we can click apply. Now you'll notice I've updated that field, but I haven't clicked apply yet. And if I go to try and use another tool, the software gives me a warning and asks me if I want to save those changes. So you get to apply those if you forget to, uh, in this case, because the software will know that you've made a change and you haven't applied it yet. So I'll cancel out that for now, for the moment. But now we'll have a look at the name because the name is a little bit different. So in order to edit the name, we need to click on this icon to the left of the tool name here, and this will open a dialog box so we can see an input box. And the contents of this input box are interpreted by the software to generate the name for the tool. Now we could just type in a new name for uh, the tool. So for example, I could just put in something like, um, 0.25 inch end mill and then maybe the uh, manufacturer ID for this tool so I can pop that in there as well and you'll notice that the name appears here and if you click OK you can see here it's now appeared on our tools list at the top here and on the left hand side here as well however if I change the diameter of this tool you'll notice that it doesn't change the name but I do get a warning obviously saying that I'm changing tool geometry um, but the name here has not changed, it has not updated. So this may lead to some confusion if I was using this tool for an operation because I think I'm using a 0.25 inch end mill, but in fact it's 0.5. So one of the things that the tool naming system allows us to do is use facts about the tool in the name. And these are called variables, so let's just edit this back to what it was, 0.25, click apply, and then we'll come back up to our name dialog box. So here where I said 0.25 inch end mill, really I'd like that to be replaced with the di actual diameter of the tool. So one way I can do this is with the right click menu. So if I just delete this for the moment, and if I right click in this form, you'll notice I get these options down here for geometry, cutting parameters, feeds and speeds, material and machine. And we've got various different options within those. So in this case, if I choose the tool type, You'll notice that it fills in the form here, but then it gives me the actual tool type name here, which is the M mill. So this variable has populated that it's an M mill tool. And then maybe in front of that, I actually wanted to have the um, diameter of the tool. So I can right click again, geometry, I can choose the diameter. And now the diameter displayed 0.25 and then M mill. And then I can put a space in between the two for some formatting. But what if I wanted to use uh, the fraction version of that? Well, I can just get rid of that. I can right mouse click again, geometry and diameter fraction. And if I put a space in there, and then you can see the fraction version of the ML. So it's saying a quarter inch ML there for our naming convention. We can also look at right clicking geometry and adding in the units as well. So now you can see it says quarter inch in inches. And then if I delete that out, and if I go to right click geometry unit short, you can see it has the abbreviation, so quarter inch M mil there as well. And let's say we want the tool type first, well, we can just delete that out from here. We can come in front of this one, click in the box, right mouse click, geometry, tool type, and that puts it at the start. Put a space in for formatting, 
and you can see just how easy it is to do that. So you have lots of different options and ways you can use your naming for your tools. So now that the tool name is automatically generated from just using this format string, if I'd like to use a string as a default for all the tools of this type, then I can look at clicking this option here. And then if I wanted to update all of my existing Nmill tools to use this tool type, then we can look at this option here, and then we can click OK. And you'll see it's now updated uh, all the Nmills to use that naming format. So this naming format system is very powerful. And so now that we specified the variable that we want to display the tool diameter in, if I now go and make changes to the tool diameter, you'll notice that it now automatically updates the name of that appropriately, which is super handy and that just ensures that I don't get uh, my data wrong. So all of my data is now displayed correctly so I don't make a mistake when choosing this tool for my toolpath. And that covers how to navigate and use the tool database.